the Jacksonville Jaguars, you have my attention. The Jags are just good. Yeah. There's there is are. no caveat necessary. There's nope. no couching this. There's no ah, the Jags could win the AFC because the Colts are disappointing. Or the Jags could do this, eh, but the Jags are just good. And I yep. feel really comfortable saying that. They were second in DVOA going into this week. Trevor Lawrence is sixth in EPA per dropback right now. It's uh he's only been hit. I know we're gonna talk about the whole team. Trevor Lawrence has only been hit, not sacked, hit three times in the past two weeks that's uh, crazy. combined. Yeah. And that's a, that speaks to a mix of a better O line, better scheme and Trevor Lawrence being freaking good in the pocket. They snapped an 18 game lo- road losing streak today. Uh, but this was the Jaguars. we we, when we were talking about them against the Colts and even against the commanders, we we're talking about, wow, they're, they're front. Their defensive front's actually pretty fun. Like Josh Allen stepping up, Trevon Walker, like all these guys are kind of really pushing the pocket and running all these games. And then, you saw what that whole picture can look like, a better offense with a quarterback that's taking a huge leap forward this year and a defense that has true speed and some true dudes. I mean, we I mean, there's a ton of plays I want to talk about, but it's it was a really, really cool performance from this whole team that is, has a lot of confidence right now, it seems like. Let's start with Trevor Lawrence. We can let you do your victory lap here in a second because I think you had the most steadfast belief in him and what was yeah. – a bad statistical rookie year yep. when you just look at the box score numbers and even even advanced numbers he was not good it was no. a rough year but you had unwavering belief in what he could be what do you think is the most important proof is in the pudding aspect to his game over the first three games where like this is undeniably why he has been so good it's the just different type of throws he's hitting i know that sounds obvious but not only just the creation throws like the first touchdown he had today where he's breaking out of the pocket in the red zone there was even a, a, a short little pass play, and it's so simple. I really want to say it was on a third and short. It was an RPO, and he throws it with touch. He throws a little flat route with touch. And he, how quickly he flashes the fake and touches the throw over. You shouldn't be able to do that in an RPO because it's so it's so bang bang usually. He the fact that he's operating so quickly that he has confidence in what's being called. Um, he's just doing everything so well. All those third and fourth downs, he has confidence, and you can tell just every, where the eyes are going. They run, they run a ton of crossing routes, especially on third down. They love mesh. They love drive. Mm-hmm. Love love those concepts. They dress them up so well. Like Doug Peterson, and this is what he did with the Eagles too, doesn't run a ton of plays, but they window dress them so well that you can tell Trevor Lawrence is kind of like, okay, we're in this version, we're running mesh, okay. I know I got Evan Ingram coming on the crosser, so I'm going to keep my eyes in the middle, and then I go to Evan Ingram right at the last second. He's holding defenders, and he's not doing it just once or twice a game. It's every play. So it's the fact that he's already showing these steps and how he's moving in the pocket. That three hits speaks to his movement in the pocket as well. It's just that he, he looks great. <laughs> he looks freaking awesome. Uh, I'm, uh, even he's missing accurately. And I mean that not that he's missing the throw, but he's thrown low balls. Like when the guy's mm-hmm. on over to save him a hit, he had one to Kirk, I think today, Christian Kirk, and where he's just, he's peppering him, but hitting him low. So also the guy, the safety has to jump over the top, saving him a hit. They had another one. Sorry. Last one. They had a, a screen. Go nuts, buddy. I'm, I'm going to because hell yeah, I took enough flack for this. So I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it while I can. They ran, a, they ran a screen RPO. I didn't even realize an RPO. It was, it was a second and like six, and it was a quick out route to Christian Kirk. So I was like, oh, that's a nice little quick out route. I didn't realize it was a package play where they're running a screen on the other side. So basically, he had nobody blocking for him, and he has three guys running right from by, by design. I'm not saying it was bad design. They're run, going to block the screen. They're running a screen to Jamal Agnew to the field. Three guys are running at him. He just drifts back, hits the out route before Christian Kirk's even breaking. The ball is out, and the, the Chargers have no chance because the ball is coming out so quickly. And it's it's really cool to watch a, a quarterback gain confidence as the game's going along and the season's going along. There are two things I noticed when I was watching the Jaguars today, outside of Trevor Lawrence clearly being – a really good quarterback and taking a massive step and being one of the guys potentially now in the group of that is a really good quarterback. That is going to be a really good quarterback for a long time, which is one of the groups you want to be in as an NFL organization. Yes, you do. They have a ton of juice offense and defense. When you were picking as high as they've been picking for a long time, you want this. You hope so. (laughs) You hope you get some of this stuff. Yes. So when ETN is in the game, 
he has a ton of pop. And James Robinson's undrafted. He, he They didn't need any draft picks to have that element to their offense. He's a very good player. But you feel it, even with Agnew. When yeah. Agnew is on some of this stuff, you feel the amount of speed that they have, the amount of explosiveness yep. they have. Kirk gives them that, especially when you contrast it with what the Chargers feel like on offense. You right. can feel such a difference when you watch these two teams play. And then on defense – <laughs> they're gremlins like dude, they they're are. so those guys with walker and allen and even like dropping arden key into that situation and what yep. they have at linebacker now with aluacon and lloyd and javon hamilton is like stepping yeah, up yes. like a nose tackle like yeah they have, so it's these guys, they have pop but it's yep. not about just that they are extremely well coached Yep. On both sides of the ball. And whether it's coaching or just fundamental play, I, I can two plays really stuck out to me in this game. One, they ran a draw on second and five. And it was uh, the same play where Agnew was working on Murray in space. And you've watched Cam Robinson on this play. They run a draw and he does a great job. I think Rumpf was in the game. Bosa got hurt, something to mention. This team is not deep on the edge. Bosa missed any time. They'd be in a really big trouble. But he sells Rumpf upfield two or three yards and still is able to get five yards downfield to block Derwin James on this chunk play draw play that they ran on second and five, just a small thing, but such yep. commitment to the details from your left tackle on that. And there was another play. I can't remember exactly when in the game that happened. It was, Oh, it was maybe the first drive for the Chargers. It was a third and one Trayvon Walker does an incredible job stringing this play out against, I think it was Gerald Everett trying to lock him down on the edge. It goes for no gain, drive gets stuffed, makes them punt it away. Just a small thing. But your number one overall pick, who is one of the best athletes purely in the NFL yep. from the moment he stepped into it, doing everything in his power to keep contain on that play and yep. stopping a drive for the other team. That happened all the time today. Darius Williams had a couple fantastic moments where he's sniffing out a screen, even though they're using a bunch of motion, exactly trying to put him in conflict. Like, all the time, this team looks well coached and they have a decent amount of talent. And when you combine those two things, you're left with a team that's just good. Yes. Uh, the, the creativity, in the, the just in the offense is uh, Christian Kirk's touchdown in the third quarter. Empty play. James Robinson goes in orbit motion. So he goes behind the quarterback. Two defenders of the Chargers run with it. And it's such a quick, but all the motions going one way. Then Trevor Lawrence sprints out the other way and they run a little pick. Boom hit the quick out route and sounds so simple, but watch other offenses, watch other yeah. offense, watch yes. the Raiders get inside the 10 yard line. And, oh, we don't know what to do. Oh, we can't get the ball out there. The Jaguars are going, Hey, we're, we're, we don't run much, but we're just going to window dress the hell out of it. And it looks so good. The, the two point play right after that touchdown, I'm just talking about two point play. They went on a quick cadence. So it's just ready to go. So why they did that, they had a stack alignment and you could see the chargers players, uh, what's his name? Ends up Evan Ingram and that's a wide open in the flat. You can see them communicating because they're like, Oh, it's two point play, they're gonna go on one. Okay, so hey, okay, yeah, pass it off, right? Snap of the ball, boom, Evan Ingram's wide open. Details and everyone's everyone plays fast when they go for it on fourth down. You can see all the guys looking at each other like they know where they're we're going on fourth down. They look they so can, comfortable, they look and they all look so comfortable all the time. Everything, everything they um, last one is they had, and this is just talking about the game planning that that this Jaguars offense does is. Uh, the Chargers will kick their fronts based on the running back strength. So right at the snap of the ball several times today, they shifted the running back strength side. So he's to Trevor Lawrence's right, boom, goes to the left, and they snap the ball and then they hand it off. But you can see the Chargers starting to communicate, going like, oh, back over, you know, back strong. Like they're standing up and the ball's getting snapped. So they're in a bad position. It's all – we all say it's all the 1%. The 1%, people want to make that out like it's the Patriot way or anything like that. This is what they mean by gaining that 1%. You're giving the, yourself the, so much more room for error and also putting your guys in better spots because they're not even ready for the snap as you are, as you are controlling everything. And it's cool when you have a good scheme, players playing fast, and a freaking quarterback back there that's like looking better and better. He looks so good. He really does. And so it's a really, really fun package to watch. It's 1% for most teams. Compared to last year's Jags, it's yeah. – uh. 83 percent 87 percent name yes. your number it's yeah. incredible that a lot of this roster was carried over from last season and they look right. like this right now well just the trust in james robinson is all you have to speak between what's the difference between urban meyer and and doug doug peterson is that 
he wanted to run James Robinson off the team because he wasn't fast enough. But James Robinson is a three, a legit three down running back. This is not the knock tra Travis Etienne, who had his best pass protection day, was tra Etienne did today. And that's his big kind of qualm. James Robinson can play all three downs, can run every type of run. That's why he's on the field on a fourth and one. And it's not weird. You know, it's not like, oh, why is this guy in? It's like, no, oh, he could pass, pass protect. He can run a route and he can run every type of run play. They run that long pole guard, uh, guard pole play, which was also, they were in three tight ends and the Chargers matched with five DBs, which was interesting as well. But they run that play, which is the same play Leonard Fournette scored on the Bucks when they won the Super Bowl against the, the, the Chiefs a few years ago. But that's what it just speaks to that, that Urban Meyer had no idea what the hell the NFL was and what the ecosystem of it all was and what is a good player. He just wanted everybody to run a 4-3 because that can work in college. Uh, but no, he gets you see this and Doug Pearson's like, no, we want this guy on the field as much as possible. And then we use ETN and put him in great spots, catching swings, catching screens. Understanding personnel is such a huge thing in the NFL and this team gets it. James Robinson is one of the best pure running backs in the NFL. NFL, yeah, he's one of the best handful of pure runners in the NFL. You he's should be getting three down that guy running a back. lot of work. Three down running back, and Urban Meyer's like, I don't want him. Uh, yeah, just that that's that's the difference right there. Talked about some of the guys that were carryovers from last year and how different they look. One guy who was not a carryover from last year, Devin Lloyd looks, looks awesome. Great. I know he looks so good. There was a, a sequence on a series in the second half. I think they were in man coverage on first down. He runs step for step with Gerald Everett for a PBU about 25 yards down the field. He's saying something. Well, that is yes. saying something. Running Gerald with Everett's team. a really good athlete. And for it's him as an off-ball linebacker to do that, and that's a lot of athleticism, right? Mm -hmm. So let's let's show some awareness. Third down, he's mugged up near the line of scrimmage. He bails out. He bails out quick enough to get his hips around to pick up the crosser coming into his eyes from left to right and then driving on that to make a play short of the sticks on third down to torpedo the drive. Yep. He's a first round pick, a lot of length, big athlete, had some flashes as a pass rusher in college. His awareness in coverage for a guy playing his third game right. has been kind of remarkable, especially because we have not seen that from guys taken in that range of the draft at that right. position at all because a lot of those guys are drafted purely on traits and they struggle to understand the situational and spatial aspects of the position quay he walker not the packers that, yeah, that's and that's okay no quay walkers could be fine it's just the awareness that you can already see the difference but no i'm sorry Continue. That happens all the time at that position yep. for first round picks. Think about how much yep. Jamin Davis has struggled. Think about the Cardinals linebackers and how much they've struggled. Yes. So to watch a guy like Lloyd come in and clearly be picking stuff up really fast. I, I just am super impressed with how the defense looks and how those guys are just all seemingly on the same page. It's remarkable. They're squeezing so many throws, which is what we always, what we talk, compliment the bills. The Jaguars defense is doing the same thing. They're winning with four. They're blitz two as well, but they're doing all these different looks and then also squeezing because that means they're understanding what's getting thrown at them. They're well coached. They're a really well coached team. And also, uh, Devin Lloyd is tied for first in the whole NFL for splash plays, which is, you know, PBUs, you know, everything, uh, stops, interceptions, everything. He's tied for first right now, which is remarkable for a rookie linebacker. I'm very excited to keep watching him. Yeah. One more thing I want to talk about with this game. We mentioned a little bit when you and I were chatting earlier today. The fun chasm between what – fun chasm sounds really close to us, some other yeah. things. I might have to rethink that term. The gap in fun between watching the Jaguars right now and watching the Chargers. And I know Justin Herbert's hurt and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Mm -hmm. it, it should not be that big when you have a quarterback like Justin Herbert. It should not be so much more enjoyable – to watch the Jags than it is to watch the Chargers at this stage of things. And it really is. Mm -hmm. I, I was joking. We have Pythagorean wins in the NFL where it's your point total. We talk about point differential. We should have a fun differential. It should be the Epicure your, your Epicurean wins are how much more fun you are than the teams that you're playing against. And right now, like the Chargers actual wins might be fine by the end of yeah. the year but i'm concerned about what their epicurean win total is going to look like if they keep playing like this i love it i was wondering what term you'd come up with for that so that that's perfect but it, i mean justin herbert hit one of his amazing 0.001 percent throws Insane. and it didn't it didn't feel exciting it felt oh relief from the chargers because you could feel that 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 moment it was like that game was slipping away but 
it the, it wasn't like the side one like oh shit like and like and everyone, it was more like okay. exactly right oh man we got it first okay thank god all right everyone take a you know sigh of relief here okay thank god but that's not good it's week three this team is supposed to be a one of the elite teams this year i know they had stuff to figure out but man it just didn't feel they don't they don't feel confident with anything that's happening they feel just relief when a good play happens which is scary slater goes out in this game one more yep. thing to be concerned about one more injury Storm Norton being in this game showed up a couple different times. I I don't want to belabor this because if Justin Herbert really said, I want to stay in and he was adamant about it, that's fine. He cannot be in there at the end of that. No, game. no, it's the NFL. You got to understand that it's, you can't, you can't, it's you hard can't to watch. That. He, the yeah. first hit he takes today, he's wincing on the ground. They're down yeah. 28 points in the fourth quarter. The guy's having to take pain killing injections before the game and he's out there playing. Like yeah. at a certain point, I just think you have to be, you're sitting down. We're, yeah. we're this is an 18 game season. We got we're trying to win Super Bowls here. Yeah. Uh, it's really tough. I, I watching him in that moment made me hurt. I can't imagine how he was feeling. Yeah, the the sometimes as a coach, that's what you have to understand. You protect your players. It's they're they're of course they're going to want to play. That that they're the most competitive people in the world. This is literally they're professionals at it. So, but sometimes you just have to, even if it, it sucks, even if they're mad at you. You just got to eat it and just go, no, like, no, not, now's not the time. Now's not the time. Even if you want to be out there with your teammates, whatever it is, it's like, now's not the time. Like you said, you have to understand what a long season this is. It's one game. I'll be like, yes, you want to win every game, but sometimes you just lose. It's the NFL. Sometimes it's not your day, but you got to understand that we still have, what, 15 more games, 15 more weeks to go. Yeah. Maybe in plus playoffs. Like, yeah, let's, let's win the war and not just the battle.